What is up everyone? This is the Oklahoma Prepper and today we're going to do uh, an unboxing and a first look and a little bit of a review of the Pan Pandras Archery. These guys. Pandras Archery, 22 inch crossbow bolts, pandrasarchery.com. Um, I found these on Amazon. Um, these were 30, hang on, I gotta move the camera. $32, I believe, for a pack of 12. Uh, so let's uh, look, let's open it up and check it out and see what we've got here. Uh, this is my first time to buy bolts uh, from uh, online. First of all, and second second of all, this is my first time to buy a pack of bolts. I usually just uh, pull them out of the little cardboard thing that they sit in there at Walmart and uh, dog and cats. So first thing uh, you can see there are six, uh, there are a total of 12, but six of them are facing the opposite direction, uh, I suppose because of the, fle the fletching, uh, the fletching right here keep, uh, makes it easier to store in. And they are in a <clears throat> styrofoam pack like that, makes it a, uh, Easier makes it keeps them from uh, popping out. So there's something in here. Hang on, it might just be some trash. Yeah, wait, no. These are uh, this is pretty nifty. I didn't see this uh, on the uh, on the uh, website on the Amazon thing. These are I, I don't know if you could tell, but these are extra knocks, uh, half moon knocks. Uh, these are the uh, part that goes in the uh, against the string uh, these right here so that if, I guess if they come out or they break you can replace them which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because you know if they're sending me knocks to go with it, it makes me wonder if uh, there's a uh, bad history with them so this is how they come and styrofoam uh, and this little star foam blocks, which is pretty neat, pretty nifty. And uh, I'm just going to take one out and show you guys up close. Just going to lean them up right there. And that is the, one of the first things I noticed is the field points. I will be changing out the field points. Let me see if I can... Because usually on the field point it has a number etched in there and that usually tells you what grain uh, of field point this is uh, and and what I what I'm talking about by grain is um, the weight is measured in grains and this feels a lot heavier than a 100 grain field point and I don't see any numbers on it. So uh, just to be sure, I will be changing these out and um, putting in my 100 grain field points. And something I noticed whenever I took this out and was looking at it, um, I don't, I really doubt y'all are going to be able to see this, but right, right just past the point right here, you see right right there in the middle right just between it looks like a rubber o-ring i think i think it is that is a rubber o-ring right there just right here that is a rubber o-ring so that i like that that's a good idea it um cuz i noticed um when i'm shooting my mossy oak with my uh, mossy oak field points, the the field points always come loose. So I, I can tell this the the O ring is actually adding some good resistance to that. To uh, see like that loosely, 
I don't know if you guys can see. But you can see there's a little gap right between the bolt and the uh, field point. That is as loose as I could tie it. Uh, as that's as tight as I could tie it in it loosely. And then I grab it a little harder and I could twist it. So that O-ring is actually sitting very well in there. Um, looking down, looking down at the fletchings, they are not, they are not, uh, they're placed center and straight. So there's no flat. There won't be any spiral coming out of them. Uh, I don't know if I would agree with that because um, for those of you that know, um, a bullet is what they call rifled. There's grooves all, or a, a barrel of a gun is rifled and, and there's grooves all the way down it that kind of spiral as you go and that, that helps uh, stabilize the uh, bullet as it goes through. Um, I don't know if I would agree with that, but whatever. These, let's give it a little quick bend right here. I'm going to try not to break them because I don't have my safety glasses with me. I don't know, they're over there, but anyways. It's got a, it's got a decent, um, it's got a decent flex to it. I mean, it's pretty, pretty, uh, tough. And there it is right there. It says Pandora's Crossbow 22. Um, OD66, I believe, so what it says. And then it says, warning, check for damage before shooting. So, I, again, you know, that's a good little safety measure. I don't know if uh, there's a pr practical reason. I don't know if they are having issues with people shooting damaged bolts. But uh, this one is pretty good. This one looks good enough to fire. So uh, we are going to do that here, uh, right here just now. So it's going to be like a couple hours before I can shoot them because it is really, really hot outside and it's a little windy. And yesterday I was shooting and I was uh, hitting really, really, really far off target because of the wind. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to wait, but you guys won't have to. So here's the video. All right, guys. So it's a little bit windy. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I don't have my mic on, but I've got my bolt uh, loaded up in the bow, and I'm going to send it down range. I've got a target back there. The first shot I'm going to do is directly of the uh, bolt on the, on the uh, guide or on the rail. That way, um, if there is a... A break because I've seen some of these bows uh, some of these bolts actually shred on uh, the rail the uh, the string has actually gone through the uh, the bolt so I'm going to uh, take my first shot this way so that if there is any defect in the uh, in in the bolt then um, it will be it'll be completely 100% visible and just to make sure just to show you guys that there's nothing wrong with this uh, bolt right here. Um, it's completely uh, intact. I've looked it up, all up and down to make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. And uh, we're gonna load it up in the uh, in the in the crossbow and send it down range. So here we go. Make sure that I'm still in view. All right, it looks like it's shooting a little high, but uh, again, it's windy. That's why I couldn't shoot very much yesterday. And uh, let's just go down there and take a look at it now. All right, guys, like I said, it's really windy. So there's really not much I can do uh, to put it back on target. You can see how far in the bolt has gone. I'll make sure it didn't come out the other side. Ah. you see right here is where I pulled it out from I'm going to try to pull it out a little bit better I may have to set the phone down 
All right, guys, about right here, or about where my hand is, is about where uh, it entered in. And so that's going to be a good shot. Um, see, I don't see any damage near the knock. Uh, the fletchings are all still good. The, uh, the tip is a little bit, it's a little bit worked. But uh, I'd say not bad for the first shot, not bad for this one. So um, I'm going to send uh, 12 more down. I'm going to send the, ele the other 11 down. And um, this is my bone collector, my portable uh, field target. And uh, I'm going to pat it back down. And set it back up. And I've got this target set about uh, 20 yards. Hey, leave it. Oh, fall over first. Leave it. I've got the target set about 20 yards from where I'm shooting at, and um, that's just gonna, you know, kind of give me a good. I can I can do it at 10 foot like I normally do, uh, just to sight it in. But I'm not sighting these bolts in. I'm just uh, sending them downrange, and this is where that this bolt entered right here. So, again, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna send tw uh, send the other ones down. Excuse me, I'm going to send the other ones down, and uh, we'll take a look afterwards. All right, guys, I guess I should uh, tell y'all, since, uh, you know, that way it gives you an idea of what uh, what pressure I'm putting down range. Uh, I am using my game crusher, my Barnett game crusher, with, I believe, 175 pounds of draw weight on the string, and let me unseat this uh bolt that way to make sure the safety stays off uh stays off or the safety stays engaged but anyways uh i'm using my barnet game crusher with a 175 pound draw weight and 350 foot per second downrange speed uh so um that way it gives you a little bit of idea as to what um uh, what kind of pressure is going um through these through these bolts now I do have a little bit of a headwind so it's making these uh, bolts a little bit off target but not more than two or three inches off of the uh, target on that uh, bag so I'm, I'm pretty uh, even though it's windy yesterday was worse I was hitting really really high or really really off to the side you know about four inches uh, from the center of that bag and um, today I just sent one and I, I hit dead center I aimed dead center and hit dead center and um, you know there this this last bolt that I sent through or the the just a minute ago it actually it actually penetrated all the way halfway up literally right up against that edge of the logo and you can actually see where uh, the bag has scratched the paint off of that uh, or I don't know what that is or the bags come off the paint of the bag is coming off and onto this uh, bolt but you can actually see that it's almost dead center uh, on the bolt and that's that's a pretty good uh penetration depth that's what i'm happy with and um if i my my personal rule of thumb and and this isn't for everyone but me personally if the the bolt does not at least penetrate about as far from the tip to the edge of my thumb when i lay it across just like that I'm not gonna, that's where my distance stops. If it's any less than about right here, about five inches uh, down the bolt, that's where my distance stops. Um, I can, I can, I know I can successfully take down a deer, but I want the cleanest shot possible. And I want to be able to, um, if possible, I would love to get an in and out shot, a, a pass through shot. That way I can, um, make sure I get a double, uh, double lung hit and, um, and be able to know that I, I'm, I'm confident with my shot. 
All right, guys, so let me go get that bolt and uh, we'll start sending the rest of them. All right, guys, I'm on bolt number, I'm on bolt number five and I finally had a failure. I don't know if this was my fault or if it was uh, just bolt failure entirely. But the rest of them shot normal. This one did not. And, and the way I, when I say, I wonder if it was my fault, I'm not sure if it was my fault, is because um, I have a center block behind the bag to keep it from uh, falling over, which if th that was the case, which I think it could have been because uh, this is, I don't know, this is pretty sharp still, and, and these are supposed to be bullet points. But um, I'm, go I'm gonna move the, uh, the brick so that I can get a better, maybe this won't happen again. But like I said, it may be the bolt. I don't know yet. So that's one out of, so far, uh, five. This is number five that was shot. So I've got uh, six more, to, uh, seven more to go. And this one's done. All right, guys. So probably what I'm probably going to do is probably pull out the knock and save it. Because at this point, that's the only thing that's probably worth saving is the knock. And uh, and uh, maybe the uh, field point, I'm not quite sure. Looks like I can. So, yeah. And I don't know. Uh, like I said, I don't know how heavy these field points are. There was no information on the points themselves. So, so the knock and the field point looks like this, it may be the only thing that's worth saving. You can see right there, there's that, that ring right down in there. All right, guys, let's get back at it. All right, guys, that was six bolts and five out of six were great. Uh, it's time to start on these. What I like about this is the anti-dry fire. If the bolt's not seated in, let me pull the safety back off. If the bolt's not seated in correctly, it won't allow you to release the safety. Dead center. All right, guys, this is the last one. I'm gonna send it down and then we'll take it back inside and get a better look at these bolts. Dead center. All right, guys, so we just put 12 bolts down range. Um, and I did, with this one right here, I did go back and look at that block of concrete that was sitting behind my bag. And I did see a brand new chip on it. So that tells me that I, this went through the bag. This went through the bag and hit that concrete brick behind it. So in order for me to not do that again, I um, put a tire behind the bag instead of a uh, concrete brick so that I could, um, so that my uh, bag would stand up on its own a lot easier. Other than, other than the fact that uh, this one is destroyed, um, I was able to save the, uh, field tip out of it and I can use the fletching and I might even be able to uh, what I'm thinking about doing with this one is I'm going to tape it up really 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 good and I'm going to tape like some kind of a ball or something on it something so I can use this as a uh, a string release without you know having to actually shoot a bolt and thus risking you know any more damage so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to turn this into a, uh, a crossbow release and uh, go from there. Alright guys, so as far as the initial review goes, um, these Pandarus um, archery uh, bolts are really, really, I, I, will put a, uh, I will put a link down in the, in the description for you. Uh, check them out if you guys are interested. For some cheap, just go out and, you know, 
mess around bolts yeah absolutely um, will these go hunting yes they will go hunting with me uh, the reason why is because I was getting a better penetration with these bolts than I was with my mossy oak um, don't know why that is I don't know if it's um, the way the field points are or if it's the way the the um, mossy oak bolts are uh, built or I don't know if these are heavier they feel a little heavier than my mossy oak bolts uh, I'll have to go back and do a little bit of research but I might have to re recite my uh, bow in for these targets uh, these uh, bolts so um, I think out of every out of the 12 that I've sent down range I think three of them maybe came about right here the rest of them in fact the 11th one actually went halfway up and all I could see is just barely uh, the this S from from the logo um, so that I mean it, it came up all the way here and these are 22 inch bolts so that was well more than half of the distance so these I might actually put these in my main uh, in my in my quiver and start uh, siding my bolts in with this or my uh, crossbows in uh, my crossbows in with the these bolts so um are they worth 30 bucks considering uh barnett's bow uh, bolts and you know all the other brand bolts out there are about anywhere between six and ten dollars a piece yeah these are well worth it the, if you just want to buy uh, a bunch of bolts and stock up for shtf or if you want to actually go hunting uh, then yeah that's something to really consider um, i will do another review i will take one bolt out of all, that 12. the reason i shot all 12 today is to make sure that there weren't any that may have a defect and that could get destroyed now, since I've done that, I'm going to take one bolt and I'm going to mark it. And that's going to be my main take it out every time and target shoot with it. And I want to, I want to, uh, see how many, um, see how long I can get on, you know, four or five bolts a day, uh, shooting, uh, just to keep it sighted in, see how many days of that I can get. So, uh, that's going to be another video later on in the long run. Um, so let's, uh, let's kind of, let's kind of close up, uh, Pandora's archery. If you guys are looking for some cheap crossbow bolts, these are definitely the ones to go for. Um, I was going to get some GPP, but they were sold out of the 22 inch bolts, um, the other day whenever I was trying to order. So, uh, I decided to go with these uh pandarus and um i'm very happy with it is there anything that i would change i probably i, I really don't know i really don't know until i can get out there and send it downrange uh, several more times um will i buy these again absolutely uh, in fact i made sure to put these in my list in one of my shopping lists of things that I get uh, regularly regularly um, the, this will be definitely something I get at least uh, twice a month just to stock up for a couple of a uh, couple of months so I'm gonna have hopefully I'd like to have about a hundred uh, over the next few months and uh, that way I can just keep them stocked up and stored um, all right, so what's coming up next? I've got some bolts. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got some broadheads that I need to review. I'm going to take them out. Excuse me. I'm going to sharpen them and uh, send them downrange. Um, I really don't know if I want to do that, uh, but they do need to be sharpened. I do need to go ahead and do a first look on it, and I will do that here later. 
and post that up at a different time. Uh, what else? I have a broadhead wrench and sharpener that I need to uh, do a first look and post that up on here, which will be done today as well. So um, as far as that goes, I think I've talked about my uh, caulking rope in my last crossbow video. Um, so check that out and um, and see what you think about that. I don't know if you guys want me to do an entire review on it. Let me know down below. Um, and I've got a couple other things that we just got in that we need to do some first looks and reviews on. So I think that's going to be doing it for this video, guys. Thanks for sitting with me and watching me shoot my uh, bow. Uh, I know it wasn't very interesting, and I don't have enough, you know, phones and cameras to do different angles at different times. So uh, maybe one day in the future I can get them. But um, I hope you enjoyed those clips of me sending those bolts downrange. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and keep prepping.